Hey there, today we're gonna to talk about how I sell our produce. So there are lots of different ways to sell your produce and this has been a very highly requested video and I just wanna share you to, with you guys what I've been doing. Uh, as I started last year, uh, this is my second season, I haven't mentioned that before, uh, I just started selling to friends and friends of friends and so we started this box program, uh, sort of like a CSA in that I deliver boxes of food to families but really, it really isn't a CSA because I think really to be a CSA you need to take money up front and the customers have to share the risk with you, but uh, this is not one of those situations. Uh, I don't want to give my opinions about if CSAs are right for you or not. Um, all of this stuff is just what's, what I've been doing, what's been working for me, and I just want to share my experience with you guys. Uh, I just, uh, for a few reasons, I didn't want to take money up front. One is I wasn't confident in my growing abilities last year, and I just kind of felt awkward about it. So the way that this works, and I call it a greens box uh, or a greens box subscription, uh, families get boxes of vegetables every week. We do this year round. Uh, our farm mainly focuses on greens and that's why I call it a greens box. Now we do some seasonal crops so when those are available they will be going out as well. So right now for example we have some cucumbers and some tomatoes and some other stuff and so those will go out too. The way this works is um, it's not a formal commitment with our customers but it is expected that they get a box pretty much every week and that ensures that I have somewhat reliable uh, sales so that I can plan my production now if it's flexible though if people go out of town for a week or two or You know things just happen and they don't need a box that week. That's totally fine And so it's paid by the week the boxes cost between 20 and 25 dollars a week And that includes a deliver a small delivery fee and the pricing is basically based on you know retail price of these items you know sort of organic food from Whole Foods or farmers market kind of thing and uh if the price of the box goes over $25, I just charge $25. So a lot of weeks, probably most weeks, I put a lot of stuff in the box and it goes over that, but I just charge $25. So let me show you what's in the box this week. And then uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go out and do deliveries and I'll take you guys with me. Just so you guys know, uh, my schedule is, you know, Thursdays I am harvesting, washing, and packing, and that gives me a Friday delivery day. So those are my two days that I'm really like locked in to a set schedule and the rest of the days are sort of flexible with farming stuff and making YouTube videos. So anyways, uh, yeah, so uh, let's, let me show you what's in the box and then uh, I'll, you know, I'll take you guys out with me and ride around today and I also am gonna bring my camera with me and so you can meet some of my customers and see what they have to say. You guys know I like to be as honest and open with you guys as possible. Now, um, I would love to get a custom box of some sort but um, when I got started last year, I. Start, needed to send out boxes. I was like, where do I get boxes from? And I really couldn't find a lot of information. I bought these boxes from Uline. They're not cheap. And uh, they are waxy, so they do last a long time. Um, I'll put a link in the description for them. Uh, it's just if you're interested. And if you guys have a better box idea that's maybe a little bit cheaper, uh, let me know. Um, they, they last several rounds. My customers know to save them and then to put them back out for me so I can pick them up. And so yeah, let me show you what's in the box this week. Um, so one thing is um, we have some French breakfast radish, uh, but one thing is I always have lettuce. So that's one thing that's always in my boxes. That's one of our main uh, crops. Um, and I vary the size of the bag of lettuce depending on what else is in the box, what I have, that sort of thing. So, you know, the nice thing about this situation here for me with these boxes, it's, it's a little bit flexible, right? It's not, I don't have to give the same thing to everybody every week and people actually like it when I switch it up. So a bag of lettuce, uh, it's all washed and uh, it's, you know, washed and cut, ready to go. We have some Mizuna this week, uh, sunflower shoots. I tend to um, give pretty big bags of, of microgreens and uh, they're actually a lot cheaper than they would get in the store. But I, I find that, you know, for me and my families, I, I just want to give them a lot so they can be generous with it. They can like make it on, make it parts of salads and, and things like that and not just be a garnish, but to really like, you know, eat a lot of it and get a lot of good nutrition. I think that's why we should all be eating microgreens. Um, uh, we got a couple cucumbers and some beautiful cherry tomatoes going out this week. I'm pretty pumped about that. And the other thing that I like to do, um, because I am driving around most of the day with these in my car and I do keep the air conditioning on, but I put an ice pack in here and this has made a huge difference. Um, all my produce was, except for the tomatoes, are not refrigerated, but everything else 
uh, gets washed and then put in the fridge overnight so it's nice and cold when I leave in the morning uh, not so much of an issue in this you know when the cooler months but in the summer here it's super hot and uh, so I buy these guys um, on Amazon I'll leave a link for you guys so you can check that out but uh, my customers know to save these and put them back out for me um, but I just put it in the middle here and it makes a big difference with keeping these fresh just while they're out for the day before we head out, I just want to point out a couple of things about the delivery situation and you have to know your customers and, and sort of what they're looking for. Now, most of my customers are middle class, upper middle class in pretty nice areas. Um, and so most of them just, they're willing to pay a few bucks to have it delivered. Now, is that worth my time? It compensates it a little bit, but the reality is that, you know, part of why this works so well for people is that it's convenient. Is delivery right for you? I don't know, you have to figure that out for yourself, but it's been working all right for me. It does take uh, most of a day, but um, I think it really helps sell my product. So, this is the first time I've actually taken you guys off farm, which is exciting. I don't know how much, how often we're gonna do this, but one thing I, uh, you know, Friday delivery days are cool because, you know, in reality, there's a lot of hustle and sort of organization before we leave, but once I'm on the road, it's just, uh, you know, it's kind of a relaxing day. I'm driving around, I'm, you know, interacting with customers and, you know, that sort of things, which is really nice. So, you know, uh, I'm going to take you guys around and then, you know, we'll meet some people. And when we get back, you know, I can talk about a little bit more of like what makes sense for you guys and how you should be selling your produce. Uh, all right. Just uh, answer the question you asked me before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So I, I love getting these boxes from Josh. The vegetables are obviously super fresh. I know he harvests them like a day or two before they come. Uh, they stay fresh longer than anything we've ever bought at the grocery store either, so that's uh, that's nice having the lettuce stay fresh for like two or three weeks. Um, not that it usually takes us very long to get through it, but uh, yeah, it's it's. I know where the food comes from. It's super fresh, super healthy. It just made made a lot of sense for our family. Hi, my name's Rachel, and I've been a customer of Satin Hill Farm for a couple months now. It's been really great to have a box of produce come to my house every week. I know that that box of produce is coming from a local farm in my area. I've met the farmer, hi, <laughs> and it's it's been really great to explore new recipes to try and satisfy all of those things in the box. Plus, not having to buy eggs from a grocery store anymore, I think, is really awesome. So I know that this stuff is like hormone free. I know that it's organic. I know that it's local, and I just love being a part of it. Hi, my name is Stephanie and we started getting the Satin Hill Farms boxes because we really wanted to provide our family of six with quality food and get to know where our food comes from and it's really important to us that we have that sort of relationship with the farm to table process. Um, for not only for my husband and I, but also for our kids. Um, we have four children and it's really important to us that they understand the process of, in which we get our food. Um, we are a vegan household, so that automatically means that we have this big relationship um, with food and quality and sourcing. Um, so we were really appreciative for all that Josh has done and the food that he provides our family. So I just got back from doing the deliveries. So I did all my family deliveries and I also uh, did my restaurant too. And uh, I just want to say a big thank you to Cy, Rachel, and Stephanie for getting in front of the camera and talking about their experiences with the, with the boxes. So it doesn't take up the whole day. Uh, today was a little bit longer than usual. I was chatting with people and recording stuff, but yeah, not a full day for me. And um, yeah, so I just want to explain a little bit more about this. Um, you know, uh, as I said, it's it's pretty much a weekly thing for most people. Uh, there are pluses and minuses about every um, sales outlet that you have. Um, I like this a lot because, as I said, uh, when I started, I wasn't super comfortable with taking people's money up front. I also didn't want to have, I want to have more consistent cash flow. I didn't want to have it just all up front as well. So there are the minuses to this are that I lose customers here and there for ver various reasons, uh, and I'm constantly having to look for more customers. I've, I've been varying between sort of about 15 and 25 families total, and so that's something that you have to keep in mind. Let's talk about a couple other sales outlets too. Um, I think farmer's markets are a great idea. I don't personally, I haven't done one, and the main reason for that is I just am not really willing to give up my Saturdays at this time. I'm, I wanna be home with my family. Uh, but it can be a great situation uh, for a lot of reasons. One is you don't have to do marketing, you just, I mean, you have to do some marketing while you're there, but ahead of time, um, 
you don't have to do as much. I'm, I'm, I'll take that back. You should definitely do some social media stuff always for your business. Uh, but you know, you just show up with your products and you're there and that's it. You take care of it. Um, you know, something like mine is a lot of coordinating. There's a lot of emailing, communicating with customers and that sort of thing. And I think the two benefits of something like this in a farmer's market is that you can be a little bit more flexible about what you produce, right? Because they're not ordering specific items. The boxes for me are not customizable at all. And I only offer one size. So that's just how it is. And having an outlet like that can be really beneficial. Um, so you can sort of uh, try to get rid of some products that you need to get rid of, or, you know, you can just change things up a little bit. Now, I really believe that it's cool to have more than one source of um, a sales outlet. Like for me, with the restaurants and then also with the boxes, it gives me that flexibility. The chefs are going to have very specific things they want and I'm able to take what I don't sell to them and give it to my families. Now, sometimes I hold things from my families and don't give them to the chefs, but that's a whole other thing. Um, so those are the sort of the sales outlets. Now, the other one that you can consider is selling retail and selling packages to go to supermarkets and things like that. Now. I'm not interested in that. Uh, one of the main reasons is because you don't get as much price per pound. And it's not the only driving factor. I mean, yes, you know, you don't get, you make more money if you sell direct to customer, but you also have to keep in mind like the cost that goes into marketing and communicating and coordinating and all that stuff. Cause you know, there's a lot of time that goes into that. So, you know, for some people, if they're gonna just push a little bit more volume, maybe it makes sense to do something um, in a retail situation or sell to an aggregator, a company that collects a lot of produce from farmers and then resells it. So there's a lot of things for you to consider. Um, this is just what I've been doing and I just wanted to pass this on to you. I know I get a lot of questions about this and this is sort of where I'm at right now. There's no perfect solution. Uh, you also have to do a lot of market research in your market. You have to know what you can sell, how much you can get for things. You know, if you're in a really rural area and you think you're just gonna crush it with microgreens, is there a market for it? Are people going to buy it? Are they going to give you the money that you know you can make on it? People often ask me about prices and I cannot tell you how much to charge for things. You have to figure that out in your market, what people are into, uh, what you know, if they're willing to spend that much on certain items and you know, go to a farmer's market, check out local co-ops, um, things like that. Talk to chefs, you know, I, in the, as I start selling to chefs, you talk to them and say, hey, is this about what I should be charging? What have you been paying for this? And they'll, they'll tell you, like, you just, you know, you gotta be open about it with them. And, you know, they've been, they've been really supportive. So anyways, I wanted to share this information with you. I really hope you enjoyed this. And yeah, just wanna give you another idea about what you can do anyways. And that's what I got for you today. So thanks for watching. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And if you haven't, click that little bell so you'll get notified when I put out a new video. And, uh, Guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one. Yeah, no, it's... <laughs> we'll put this at the end. Hopefully that takes in the end. <laughs>